What follows is a collection of works by yours truly, Dr. Stefan Hoffman from the University of Nuln. Through my eyes, we will explore the interesting history of Ostermark and see firsthand what makes this province so unique, with its borders touching the wild, enigmatic land of Kislev and the towering World Edge Mountains. Together, we will delve into the rich tapestry of cultures, the hardy resilience of its people, and the haunting beauty of its landscapes, marred by a history both grand and tragic. As we venture through bustling market towns and serene forgotten ruins, we will uncover stories of courage, intrigue, and the indomitable human spirit. From the legendary craftsmanship of Richofen's boatyards to the eerie, silent street of the cursed city of Mordheim. In this series, we're not just recounting history, no, no. We are living it. We'll stand where heroes stood, explore hidden corners shrouded in mystery, and perhaps even come face to face with the spectral remnants of the past. I make my way to Ostermark, nestled in the far northeastern corner of the Empire Domains. I can share some details about how this province came to be. Ostermark, or so it is officially known, the League of Ostermark, and sometimes colloquially referred to as the East March, is a unique and relatively young electoral province in the grand tapestry of our beloved Empire. The land of Ostermark has a history that traces back to the dawn of the Empire, existing even when the legendary Sigma Heldenhammer first united the tribes. However, its modern incarnation of the province, the League of Ostermark, emerged from turbulent and chaotic times in the late 19th century of the Imperial Calendar. This era was marked by a catastrophic event the impact of a massive comet that obliterated Mordheim, the province's capital at that time. The comet arrival wrought unimaginable destruction, decimating the central governing body and claiming the lives of the ruling nobility. In the wake of this calamity, with their political and administrative core in ruins, the scattered towns and villages of Ostermark found themselves at a crossroads. From the ashes of tragedy, the survivors banded together, forging a new path out of pure necessity. They formed a collective, an oligarchic union that would lay the foundations for what is today known as the League of Ostermark. We will talk more about Mordheim and that particular incident when we visit the cursed place. For now, we will go to settle in and have a meal in Betchafen the current capital city of the province and the place where someone is waiting for me. As I traversed the lands and arrived to the capital, I noticed that even though it is summertime, there's something feeble and hesitant about the sunlight. Like, it's not sure it wants to be there. But now I think about it, Ostermark, in its distinctive locale, lies on the extreme eastern frontier of the Empire, a land where the authoritative influence of the Emperor gradually fades, giving way to the untamed expanses of Kislev to the north, known for its hardy people and harsh climates, and also the majestic World's Edge Mountains, the domain of the dwarfs, but also home to green tribes, ogres and other wild creatures. This unique positioning of Ostermark makes it a borderland in more ways than one, not just in terms of geography, but also in its cultural and political landscape. Upon my arrival in Betchafen, the capital city of Ostermark, I was filled with anticipation. Not only was I about to delve into the history of this intriguing frontier city, but I was also looking forward to reconnecting with an old friend and colleague, Wilhelm Adler. Wilhelm and I had crossed paths several years ago during a series of lectures at the University of Altdorf. His insightful discourse on military history had left a lasting impression on me. 
Wilhelm, a former military officer with a passion for history, had since turned his strategic acumen towards scholarly pursuits. His fascination with military strategies and the defence mechanisms of border cities led him to settle in Bechefen. Here, he has been conducting an in-depth study on how frontier cities have historically managed their defences against various threats, a topic of particular relevance given Ostermark's location on the eastern edge of the Empire. Ha <laughs> ha! Stefan! It is a delight to see you after all these years. The roads are long and taxing, no doubt. Come inside, rest your feet. I prepared a meal to rejuvenate you after your journey. I was warmly greeted by Wilhelm at his residence, a quaint yet elegant house that reflected his refined taste and academic lifestyle. Over a hearty meal, we began exchanging stories. He shared his experiences in Bechefen, while I recounted my recent investigations in Sylvania. And what a better way to have a hearty meal than diving into HelloFresh's healthy and delicious recipes, delivered right to your door. Join America's number one meal kit today and welcome your yummiest year yet. Enjoy chef-designed recipes and fresh ingredients with an affordable price. If you're looking to cut out costs, improve your diet, or simply reduce stress, HelloFresh is your go-to solution. Say goodbye to wasted time pondering over meals. With a selection of over 45 recipes and an array of market items tailored to fit your lifestyle, HelloFresh eliminates the hassle of meal planning. The quick and easy options featuring 20-minute recipes are crafted to reduce stress and increase the time actually enjoying your food. And what's better than indulging in an exquisite dessert post-meal? That's why they're offering all new members a lifetime of free desserts. With this deal, you'll receive a complimentary dessert with every HelloFresh delivery, adding a sweet finale to your eating experience. Click the link in the description, or use my code to get 16 free meals, plus free dessert for life while subscription is active. As the evening progressed, Wilhelm proposed a tour of the city for the following day, offering to show me the key historical sites and the modern adaptations that had evolved from its rich past. This I knew would be an invaluable opportunity to understand not just Bechefen, but also the broader dynamics of life in a border province like Ostermark. The first light of dawn was just breaking as I awoke, refreshed and eager for the day ahead. Wilhelm, ever the gracious host, had prepared a simple yet nourishing breakfast, fueling us for our day's journey. As we walked, Wilhelm pointed out various landmarks and sites. The city, he explained, was a blend of functional military design and the cultural richness born of its unique geographical location. The streets were lined with buildings that bore the marks of time and history, some still showing the scars of past conflicts, others restored or repurposed. Our path took us through bustling market squares, where traders from all corners of the empire and beyond exchanged goods and stories. The vibrancy and diversity of Bechefen's markets were a clear indication of its role as a crossroads between the Empire and the wilder lands to the east and the mountains. Then we arrived at the city port. Renowned for its craftsmanship, Bechefen boasts of some of the most esteemed boatyards in the entire Empire. 
Here, skilled artisans and shipwrights construct a wide array of river craft, ranging from sturdy trading barges to elegant boats. These vessels are not just functional, they are masterpieces of design and engineering that showcase the city's long-standing tradition of excellence in shipbuilding. In addition to the boatyards, Bechafen is home to two notable water-powered sawmills. With their intricate system of gears and wheels, they harness the power of the river to process timber. These impressive structures were a benevolent gift from the Dwarf King of Kalak Kadrin, symbolizing the strong ties between Bechafen and the Dwarf Realms. As Wilhelm and I meandered through the street, our journey led us to a site that commanded solemn reverence. There, visible amidst the bustling life of the city, was a large temple dedicated to Mor, the god of the dead. The architecture of the Mor temple was imposing, its sombre stone walls and gothic spires reaching towards the sky. The design spoke of respect and honour for the departed, with intricate carvings and statues depicting Moore's guardians, the Ravens of Death. These symbols served as a reminder of Moore's dominion over the afterlife and his role as a guide for souls transitioning to the next world. Wilhelm whispered to me that this temple was not just a place of worship, but also a centre of learning and study for matters of death and the afterlife. It was here that scholars and theologians pondered the mysteries of mortality, seeking understanding in the teachings of Moor. Inside, priests and acolytes moved silently about their duties, their robes a deep mournful black. As we left the temple, the sounds and sight of the city gradually returned to life. And suddenly, as Wilhelm and I navigated the vibrant streets of Bechafen, we found ourselves at the doorstep of a renowned local establishment, the Red Teeth Tavern. You're in for a real treat, Stefan. The Red Teeth has a charm like no other. Its fame is well deserved, as you'll soon see. The tavern, a creation of its Tilian proprietor, Rogero Stila stood out with its distinctive architecture that paid homage to his Tilian roots. The Red Teeth was designed with several expansive bar rooms, each adorned with massive, intricately carved booths that overshadowed the relatively few tables. Rogero, understanding the generous nature of the ogres when it came to indulging in food and drink, had crafted the tavern to maximize the comfort of these hulking creatures. The tavern's menu was as unique as its clientele, specializing in colossal skewers of meat served as raw as the clients wanted. This culinary preference of the ogres meant that the space and furniture within the tavern were often splattered with remnants of their feasts, lending the establishment its name and a certain rugged charm. The Red Teeth was more than just a place for food and drink. It had become a go-to spot for those in Bechafen seeking to hire ogre mercenaries. The tavern's reputation as a meeting place for these mighty warriors made it a focal point for anyone looking to enlist in their services. Our conversation turned to the unique challenges faced by Ostermark. Over the clinking of tankards and the laughter of the tavern's patrons, Wilhelm explained to me the critical role that ogres play in the survival of this frontier province. You must understand, Ostermark isn't just the eastern boundary of the Empire. It's a borderland, in every sense. Constantly brushed by the wild and untamed. 
these ogres aren't just here for show or for their strength in the labor fields. They are vital for our defense. Raids and attacks are frequent here. Not just from human bandits, but from all manner of beasts and horrors that emerge from the wilderness. As I sipped my ale, I pondered his words. Ostermark's proximity to the wild lands beyond the Empire's borders made it a natural point for conflict and strife. The hours went by inside the tavern, enveloped in the lively atmosphere of the place. The ale was okay, nothing compared to the delicious flavour that a good bugman's beer had, but it still was enjoyable. After a few hours and a couple of drinks, Wilhelm and I decided it was time to depart. As we stepped out into the cooler evening air, the sounds of joviality and clinking mugs faded behind us, replaced by the quiet streets of Bechafen under the night sky. We walked back to Wilhelm's home under the night sky, our conversation turning to the plans for the following day. The plan was to visit the remnants of Mordheim known as the Cursed City. Mordheim's tragic history and the tales of its ruin were topics that had long intrigued me. An interesting day indeed laid ahead. The sun rose in the morning and Wilhelm and I set out for the ruins of Mordheim to the south of the province. We travelled and shared some stories from the past, but mostly the road to the former capital of Ostermark was majorly uneventful. After some travelling time, the ruins of Mordheim loomed in the distance, a haunting silhouette against the sky. The sight sent a shiver down my spine. The city, once a bustling hub of trade and culture, now lay desolate. Mordheim, often referred to as the City of the Damned, once stood proudly as a magnificent imperial city, boasting the title of capital of the Ostermark province. This once majestic city, which could even stand toe to toe in splendour and prosperity with cities like Altdorf, gradually succumbed from the inside to decay, its grandeur eroded by a creeping corruption that at first could not be seen, but a corruption that first tainted the hearts of the nobles and the elite of the city. In the year 1999 of the Imperial Calendar, the skies bore witness to a wondrous and ominous spectacle, a twin-tailed comet, widely regarded as the Herald of Sigma. This celestial event sparked fervent speculations among astronomers and soothsayers, many of whom prophesied the return of Sigmar himself, with Mordheim as his chosen site of arrival. This prophecy set a mass migration into motion, drawing people from every corner of the Empire to Mordheim, and as a result, the city swelled far beyond its means. As the population surged, the moral fabric of Mordheim rapidly deteriorated. The city descended into hedonism and lawlessness, its streets becoming a tableau of unchecked anarchy. Every new wave of arrivals only intensified the chaos, turning the city into a crucible of excess and desperation. On the eve of the new year, the anticipated climax arrived, but it was a harbinger of doom, not the prophesied return of Sigma. The comet, once a symbol of hope and renewal, hurtled towards Mordheim with unstoppable force, obliterating the city in a cataclysmic impact. The city was reduced to nothing but rubble in an instant, the vast majority of its populace perishing under the comet's wrath. In the wake of this disaster, 
whispers and speculations swirled like the dust over the ruins. Many believed that the comet impact was a divine judgement from Sigma himself, a punishing blow for the rampant depravity and moral decay that had consumed the city. The people of Mordheim, once basking in hedonistic abandon, were now seen as victims of their own unworthiness, struck down by a celestial verdict that left nothing but death and destruction in its wake. From that point on, the ruling class of Ostermark was no more, and the people had to reorganize to eventually form the League of Ostermark. Presently, Mordheim is a forsaken city, a domain where only the reckless, the deranged, or the avaricious dare to tread. They come in search of the remnants of its past wealth, or, more perilously, to scavenge the verdant fragments of warpstone born from the comet that wrought this ruin. This malevolent stone, scattering its malignant essence throughout the city, has tainted Mordheim with corruption. Our investigation of the eerie ruins of Mordheim had just concluded, leaving behind a trail of haunting memories and unanswered questions. As we prepared to depart, Wilhelm, with a noticeably troubled expression, revealed to me a matter of urgent family concern. He explained that his sister, residing in Talapheim, the bustling capital city of Talabekland, had been stricken with a mysterious illness. This ailment, he mentioned, wasn't isolated to her alone, no. Apparently, it had begun to spread through several towns and villages in Talabekland, baffling local healers with its unknown nature. The worry in Wilhelm's voice was evident as he spoke of the dire situation. Recognizing an opportunity to possibly aid in understanding and diagnosing this strange illness, I offered to accompany Wilhelm to Talabekland. My knowledge, though primarily academic, could provide a fresh perspective on this perplexing ailment. Wilhelm seemed relieved at my offer, grateful for the support and the potential insight I could bring. Thus, our journey took a new direction, leading us towards Talabekland. The road there would not only be a journey across the landscape, but also a venture into the unknown realms of science and medicine, a path I was eager to tread alongside Wilhelm. Thank you for walking with us through the heart of Ostermark. Stand ready, for our adventure continues, and our tales within the Empire are just beginning. Until next time, let curiosity be your guide, and history your companion. This is Dr. Stefan Hoffman, and this has been our journey so far.